Today, I would want us to carry out an experiment to investigate the relationship between the number of images formed by two plane mirrors inclined to each other and the angle between them.
already have data here. Uh, we have theta uh, that is from 90 uh, descending up to 30. We have the number of images as we did the experiment uh, from 3 increasing up to 11. Then we want to find 1 over theta. Of course, we already have it here. So 1 over theta is this. That means uh, for this value here, we have 1 over 90. That is why we're getting 0 0.011. And the value increases until the last value. Uh, that is 0 0.033. So we need to plot a graph of um, N uh, against, against 1 over theta. So if you see this, N against 1 over theta, that means it's... Uh, the number of images should be on the y-axis, then 1 over theta should be on the x, on the x-axis. So we want to plot these values here on the, uh, the, plot the points on the graph. Now before we do that, we need to know which interval are we going to use. Uh, if you look at this, 30, 40, 45, if we use, because we're supposed to use uh, more than a half of this page that we have. So the scale we're going to use on the y-axis, on the y-axis, because the lowest value is 30, the highest value is 90. That means we can use each square, each square, that means from here to here, this is each square. So we can able to use, on the y-axis, we can let each, so on the y-axis, we can have how many boxes? Two square boxes, two square boxes. So you can have two square boxes to represent, to represent one image. The number of images are huh? one image. Then on the x-axis, on the x-axis we can use, you know, it's a way. We can use four, four square boxes to represent. 0 0.01 uh, that is an uh, inverse of the uh, of the degrees or sorry <laughs> to represent 0 0.01 per degree per degree because so it's one over theta all right so we can start So 0 0.011, you need to understand this scale here. So this will be 0, so these two small boxes, this is 0 0.001. That means if you want 0 0.1, 0 0.011, that will be here. So 0 0.11, that is a 0 0.011, that is here. And then three, three is here. So we mark that point. Next one. Zero point zero one four.
need to draw a line of best fit. Is the point here not to move in? Line of best fit should tend to pass through the majority of the points such that the number of uh, points on this side should be equal to the number of points on the other side. That's the line of best fit. So there are two points, this, this on this side, and there's this point here, this, and this. So this is a line of best fit. So we need to find the y-intercept. The y-intercept. The y-intercept is a, a point on the graph where the line graph cuts the y-axis. And as you can able to see, there is about, oh, we used to, this is one, so that means this should be negative one. So the y-intercept here is negative one. Uh, it's exactly on that point. You can able to see this particular point. So the y-intercept is negative one. So the next thing is to find the gradient or the slope the slope of the graph, call it m. Remember slope m is given by change in y over change in, in x. For this case, the y is n, which is the number of images. So that means the change in number of n over change in 1 over theta. 1 over theta is on the x-axis. So we need to identify two points on the graph. Two points on the graph, which you can read easily. And then it should be at least a half or more than the, the line to get a accurate result. So remember when choosing the points, you have to choose the points which are on the graph. So you cannot use this point, you cannot use this, you cannot use this. You choose the points which are on the graph. So let me pick this point. Um, let's say here. Mm -hmm. So let me choose this point. Mm -hmm. Let's say here. This point, this is uh, on the y axis, that is 1.5, on the x axis. This going this is zero point zero zero five zero zero six seven. So that's the point zero point zero zero seven and one point five. Then you can choose this point here. This is on the graph that is eight and this is uh, 0 0.025 so that is 0 0.025 and 8 so the gradient we have to show those points that we have actually used the gradient so we we'll mark the point change in n and there is a change in 1 over theta so the gradient here the gradient m which is given by change in n so that is a 1.5 so we can use this that is 8 8 minus 1.5 over 0 0.025 minus 0 0.0 0, 7. So 8 minus 1.5 divided by bracket 0 0.025 
minus 0 0.007 0 0 that gives us this gives us 361.11 uh, into three significant figures this will be 361 but then we need to know the unit so from here you can able to see this is changing the number of images so that is like number of images which has no unit over 1 over theta so basically uh, this can be equal to change in number times uh, the angle actually so if you see this is 1 over theta so the same as theta so that means the unit here is degrees so this is 361 degrees now if you can recall uh, there is this formula here which is used to calculate so the formula is used to calculate the number of images formed by two plane mirrors this formula n is given by 360 divided by theta minus 1 now where n is the number number of images formed theta is the angle between the two plane mirrors and of course one is a constant value so if you're supposed to evaluate this for what we have used here on the y-axis we have used n as capital n and this is 360 over theta minus 1 so from here n if you write this to form the you know, equation of a straight line which said that y is equal to mx plus c then our equation is written as n is equal to 360 then that is 1 over over theta plus c so you can able to see clearly 360 is the gradient of this graph if you plot n against 1 over theta then 360 become the gradient or the slope of that graph then c c is the gradient so sorry sorry this is supposed to be uh sorry let me write it this is 360 1 over theta minus 1 so our c here is negative 1 so c is negative 1 and as you can able to see from uh, our graph c is negative 1 and then uh, the gradient is 361 the difference is only one that difference should be too small if you take uh, 361 minus 360 of um, 360 that difference is uh, so that is one divided by 360 so if you multiply by a hundred multiply by a hundred uh, the percentage uncertainty here percentage uncertainty is 0 0.27 sorry 0 0.28 which is very very small so we can able to say that uh, our results are accurate uh, depending on what we have found